Hey everyone, my name is Nikolai Wolf. I'm from Parity Technologies and I'm a leading developer in the various fields, and more recently in WebAssembly. First of all, as well as in the field of cryptography. Today I would like to talk, in fact, about WebAssembly. Why do we in the parity bet on both? And how would they combine together because they are based on one principles? And uh, how all this is applied and combined with the blockchain? Actually, WebAssembly is often called a game changer for the web. What is a game changer? Game changer is something that allows you to solve tasks that were not solved at all or solved not very effectively, as uh, on any platform, in this case for the web. In web development, there was always a need for some deterministic calculations. They are the same in all browsers that are executed so that they can be run on the phone, in any browser, and so on. To ensure that they are the same everywhere. So that the user saw the same picture, the same video processing, or something else. And in fact, the need for this ex existing for a long time and many individual players in the field of web development, developers of browsers. Even enough to remember the efforts of Google, which made sodium chloride the so-called native client, but is written as sodium chloride, portable native client. It's enough to remember Microsoft Business, ActiveX, Silverlight and some other nightmare they did. And Mozilla was a less successful implementation of the SMGS. But if you look at these requirements, which are imposed on this here by WebAssembly to such a calculation, then we'll see that the same requirements exist in the blockchain. That is, program that contain these computations must be executed quickly, should take up a little space, because the nodes of the blockchain are constantly communicating these calculations among themselves and performing them. And so, when we hear in parity that WebAssembly is a game changer for the web, we try to add that not only for the web, but for the blockchain too. WebAssembly in parity technologies, in principle, is already used a lot rare. Probably many have heard about our product, our new project which is being implemented right now. This project Polkadot, which will provide a consensus between the various blockchains within the framework of a single large consensus and will allow transactions in some blockchains to be confirmed in other blockchains and interact with various blockchains within the framework of a single blockchain. Here is all the great consensus. This net consensus can be implemented as a program on WebAssembly and the specification of this consensus will rely on the WebAssembly specification. In principle, you can right now activate the virtual machine WebAssembly and start your networks. This will pioneer the application of technology. Also, in the near future will take place the fork of our network Coven. If anyone doesn't know, this is a test public network that is supported by Parity and in which exchangers and other players of the blockchain participate. In fact, this network will soon be forked and the assembly contracts will be easy to run there. And also, if one does not know, there are the session and taking in the Ethereum itself. Ethereum Evosm. As soon as he leaves, we hope that soon we will also support him right away, because we already have all the achievements and we have already done all this. Actually, we already passed on the key requirement of WebAssembly. 
We can see how it implements these requirements in particular with assembly in a binary code, that is, it is not a JavaScript of some kind that is interpreted and launched in the text. This is a binary format in which everything is encoded as compactly as possible, that is, its lab encodings, where large numbers are represented by a large number of bytes. Small ones seem small and various methods for packing formats, so that as little as possible it takes up all. Also, WebAssembly, if you threw out floating point operations, it is an operation with fractional numbers. It is in principle defined throughout the operation space. That is, if you interpret or run the WebAssembly compiler and then write what happens, then if you follow the specification, you will always get the same result from one result, which will be obtained by all the others that follow the same specification. That is, if someone understands, EVM is also definitely certain in all situations, but WebAssembly is a more general concept. You also need to understand that WebAssembly is not an initiative of one player or one developer who decided to release another standard and advertises it in every possible way, and so on. WebAssembly is primarily a collaboration, that is, the collaboration of such players as Microsoft, Google, Adobe, Apple and Mozilla. It's their employees gathered in a big collaboration and sign up on how this collaboration works, how it will later be implemented and agreed with the specification and so on. You can count on the fact that WebAssembly will remain here and will remain for a long time. An expertise will be maintained at the highest level. And that's not all. If we look at the WebAssembly specification, it's defined by the so-called Harvard architecture. This is a situation where you have code and data. They are always separate and do not overlap. That is, under no circumstances can you perform any data as a code, interpret as a code or upload your code somewhere else and they are somehow interpreted. Code and data are always separated. If we look at EVM, then there is no at the, this often leads to very sad consequences. And plus, it also needs to be understood that the Harvard architecture to it inspire modern processors. And also, they, of course, are not exactly Harvard architecture, but many elements of the Harvard architecture of modern processors are being introduced and implemented for some reason. This gives great safety benefits, and it gives space for some optimizations that are impossible if you do not rely on the separation of code and data. Formally, WebAssembly is a stock car and a stock machine. If you go deeper into computer science, it's a minimal machine that can be transformed into any other machines and on such platforms. Also, LLVM, which is used in many modern languages, whereas, for example, they all use LLVM to produce code. And since recently, LLVM allows to produce code in WebAssembly. And moreover, allows, allows to produce highly optimized code in WebAssembly, because LLVM has in fact 15 years of experience in the field of various optimizations. If you look at the optimization list, just a simple list of the names of these optimizations, you can flip a very long time before it ends. And in fact, when we got acquainted with these concepts and this is basics of WebAssembly, we have such a question that we could actually compile in this into WebAssembly to enjoy all the delights. Can be seen.
If you recall the latest hacks, various exploits in the last 20 years from the modern beginning of the Internet, and maybe even before that, then 90% of them are related to the fact that C and C++ are unsafe when using memory and in particular they are not safe and because people write this code. Because people also beginners write some important code that goes into production and so on. Plus C is a fairly simple language, that is, it's very difficult to express the high level abstractions that are required for modern developers, especially developers Fintech, Ethereum and other blockchains. C++, in fact, is not such a big step forward compared to C. There are abstractions of higher level. There are classes. I don't know why. But C++ has the same reasons. It's not safe when using memory. In many cases it allows for undefined behavior. And this is not what you can bet on when developing the same blockchain contracts, smart contracts, that once developed and placed on the network, it can no longer be taken out. For example, Haskell has recently been compiled into a web assembly. But Haskell is a functional language, and most modern blockchain systems work in a global variable state which does not go very well with a functional approach, that is, the true functions. From pure function, it is necessary to get read, because it is necessary to know the exact moment when something in the stake will change. And with functional languages, it is not so easy to get to know that something is happening and we will start from Haskell to throw out a few of its abstractions and finally we get Rust. Because Rust actually took a lot from Haskell and many of Haskell's functional methods in Rust got caught. Rust is really not just another language. Rust is actually a unique combination of some high-level abstractions which can be found in such languages as the same Haskell mentioned C-sharp or Swift. And here Rust took something from all of them and took it clever and took only what falls on the basic of Rust and Rust never takes control of the programmer. And that is written on Rust is directly executed. There are no hidden ones. If anyone knows the collector's implicit behaviors, everything in Rust is always written exactly as written. And lately, Rust has been used in embedded systems, so Rust security guarantees also flow into the hardware. In fact, due to what Rust allows to achieve the safety, which is famous for First of all, Rust guarantees the safety of the memory. That is, under no circumstances is the program on Rust. If it is written using a safe subset of the Rust language, do not access unlicensed memory. That is, no state can come from some garbage area of memory. Also Rust does not allow any indeterminate behavior. That is, the second follows from the first. But the meaning of that 
As I said, Rust is executed as written. It is absolutely deterministic. And actually, unlike C, it's safe. In fact, Rust is not one language, but two languages and there is a so-called unsafe Rust. And it is not absolutely safe exactly like C, but just as fast. That is, those places in the program where productivity is important, you can safely write on unsafe Rust. But there are these places in the program that are usually very carefully checked by other programmers and you can limit them. And especially carefully look and prove that they are working correctly. In fact, as we went through all this demand for language, Rust guarantees and went through the requirements of WebAssembly. And we obviously see that they are based on the same principles. And there is no special meaning. There are no excuses, let's say. Use one without the other. And at the moment, in parity, we believe that the best language for compiling WebAssembly, then later to use it in contracts, to use in blockchains, use some kind of consensus code. This is exactly a similar combination, Rust and WebAssembly. And all such principles also apply, and we have already gone through the use of blockchain applications. In fact, there are already many repositories in parity. This is only a smart part of them. There are all grumbling and if someone wants to take part in the development, we have everything publicly. Most of these repositories are distributed under permissive license. You can use, copy and so on. In fact, we are in a collaboration with the guys from the assembly. We communicate in groups and so on. All thanks for attention. Thank you for your presentation. Tell me please more about the tools you mentioned, which unites all the blockchains, and how it works. Blockchain tool you are working on, which combines various blockchains. In fact, the development of Polkadot is now in full swing. The eponymous repository Polkadot can be viewed in the organization of Parity. It is actually working on it and there is already a code of consensus on WebAssembly. How does it work from the technical side? Process from the technical side described in white paper. But in general, it is a block that combines other blockchains. That is actually very difficult. White paper is very large. Thank you. Really such question. As far as I'm concerned, WebAssembly is a byte code which is executed correctly in the browser. Yes, including. But for example, for what tasks is it needed? For which other languages cannot cope? If we look at EVM, in browsers, there are various video processing, photo editors, games. 
That is, in the browser to run them, it cannot work on JavaScript. There, accordingly, you need some code that you need to execute. And you can open the browser on any platform. You can open the browser from your phone. You can open the browser, I don't know. There is some Linux, Ubuntu, you can open on Windows. And there are absolutely different operation systems. Everywhere and absolutely respectively different. Completely different programs that must be executed. There is actually no single format that would describe something that could be described absolutely everywhere. And in fact, WebAssembly is designed to solve this problem. That is, you once compiled some complicated program which requires large and complex calculations, and it's carried out by you everywhere. On some kind of virtual machine, right? Not necessary. It is already possible on target platforms to compile WebAssembly already in the native code and in the process just in time compilation. Accordingly, it takes WebAssembly and is simply translated into machine commands, but already at the concrete client in the concrete browser. Is this a specific standard that browsers support? Yes. Not all browsers support. But in Parity, for example, what are you doing on WebAssembly? In Parity, we replace all of these place where EVM is used. That is. Virtual machine is such a toy and WebAssembly is more efficient and wherever consensus is required. Wherever smart contracts are required. All these smart contracts can be described either as code on some kind of virtual machine. In this case, it is an Ethereum virtual machine. But our network a custom including Polkadot. There it will be described as a program on the WebAssembly. So, will this code run an EVM? No, this is an EVM replacement. There are some possibilities to compile a Solidity into WebAssembly. As far as I know, the work is underway. But in principle, this is largely done in order not to write anything on Solidity because there are much more good languages, more stable and less toy than Solidity. When you're using WebAssembly, this functionality expands. I don't think it's expanding. It rather allows you to more effectively formulate contracts more compactly and less to occupy the work of all network nodes. Good afternoon, Nikolai. I have a request to you. Can you take an example of smart contract written in the Rust that is compiled into a WebAssembly and run in a virtual machine and disassemble it now on the screen? I think it will be interested for all of us. Yes, we can do this. There is just an ERC20 token written only on Rust. In fact, we have an example on which we are all trained. ERC20 token is only on Rust. If someone is familiar with Solidity, there is a similar structure that describes all the possibility of the contract. This is a description of the interface. If someone is familiar with the ERC20 token, 
all ICOs are conducted on it. In fact, in this form. And want to disassemble. If you know ERC20 tokens, all the Ethereum tokens are created on it. That is a context being created. It is created using this method. This method is a so-called constructor. Everyone in Ethereum can create his own token. He runs a similar contract for this and he says that I have a million tokens. And this million tokens actually, he says here that the total supply is a million. And once he created this ERC20 contract, one record was created that the one who sent becomes the owner of this new token. It is written here that he now owns a million tokens. And it's written that he's now the owner. And according to the ERC20 specification, you can always ask for a balance of any participant. That is, it is exactly the same as in the solidity. In this case, you can transfer when you transfer you specify just who and how much. And uh, there, the contract itself understand that here it's necessary to look at the balance of the one who caused this transfer function. Respectively, if it's zero, there is no point in transferring anything. It's from our stack. Just all sorts of different useful function for accessing the Ethereum networks, in particular to Cohen. Thank you for the presentation. And what are your plans? What are your biggest difficulties that you will face in the next two or three months? The most important test before us is to carefully evaluate the cost of all calculations. That is, you need carefully choose such parameters of all operation in the web assembly that they fairly reflect the cost of calculations for all network members. We are planning to make a floating cost that it settles in a range that would suit everyone. Then it's already used for all other networks. Even in Ethereum itself, there are big problems with the fact that many operations are underestimated. Many of them do not correspond to how many nodes spent on calculations and on the division. We also explore the possibility of using just-in-time compilation to make contracts that are stored in the WebAssembly network.
they immediately turned in the native code on the nodes. Now Mozilla has an interesting project that allows it to be done at a very high speed. We are going to use it, twist it around and possibly turn it on. Are you going to use this interpreter? We already have it. But this is an intermediate solution, I'd say experimental. It can be used for correctness, but for speed and efficiency, just-in-time compilation is necessary, so that the native code is translated. I heard that it was shutting. Will be some kind of shutting effect in the future? Shutting generally plan to ban and leave only the assembly. And if you need to serve some kind of shard, it will need to have a web assembly first. In parity, it will be supported naturally. Sharding will occur when Ethereum goes to proof of stake. So, it will not be soon. Golang is a very simple language. It's very difficult to express high-level abstractions. And plus, Golang is not very productive, because it loses in many places, even Java. In Ethereum, this is very important because the node must work very fast. And plus, in Golang there is a garbage collector. It's not very well regarded by smart contracts and so on. I will talk about what we use for smart contracts because there is no garbage collector to be there. Because the garbage collector is not deterministic. Its operation is not deterministic and accordingly it cannot simply be used. Did I answer? In this case, it is in the framework of this presentation. But Rust we use not only for this. But there, we are primarily important performance. Of course you can. Resign yourself to this problem's goal. You cannot put up. We do not put up, for example. Thanks for the presentation. This is the only thing I did not understand. I wrote a smart contract for Rust and converted it into bytecode and then uploaded it to the blockchain, right? Did bytecode is unreadable? How do I look at this source code before signing the contract and decide whether I want to send money or not? In fact, it's a problem including EVM. EVM byte code is also unreadable. Just people load the block, then they download some code of this contract through some off-chain resources. And somehow, you can make sure that if I compile this code, I'll get this code kind of code and make sure that the extracted source code is truthful. 
So I take the smart contract code from the GitHub, converted it to a byte code, and then I compared character by character to what I see in the locker. It's better to use the same versions of the compiler. And the second question, I also had a misunderstanding. If I want to write smart contracts for Rust, I'll have to raise my own network with all nodes parity, right? Yes. Or you can wait a week or two and Cohen will be maintained. Thank you. I realized that the assembly is more efficient, more compact. Are there any measurable indicators? Nowadays, unfortunately, we don't have any indicators at this stage, because the compilers are not yet ready in many ways. But as was shown at the theoretical level, it's proved that it's more effective mathematically. How much? From two or three times more effective. If you look at EVM, then you need to add 1 plus 1, you need to add 2, 265 bit numbers, that is, it's 4 times slower. Thank you. Rust is a fairly complex language in learning and using. How is it compatible with smart contracts, which in principle should read and write business? The effect of the matter is that in this case, in my opinion, this level of complexity is very justified, because smart contracts need to be written very carefully. And you need to use all the possibilities for the compiler to give you a hand and not let you to do something wrong. Why is Rust so complicated in this regard? Because it prohibits much. It prohibits a lot of ways to shoot yourself in the foot and it dismisses all these ways. And when you understand this, in fact, you will say thank you to Rust for not letting these things go. The next question is asked by Anatoly Wasserman, so I must read it. Hello, I'm watching the broadcast and I have a question to Nikolai. What are the expectations from EOS smart contracts? I don't know anything at all about EOS smart contracts. I have another question. In the WebAssembly, for example, I run a client-server implementation through the browser. Can I write my protocols? WebAssembly does not contain any primitives. It all happens runtime. And if you want an application that can use the network, then you need to look at the EMS scripting sites. It already compiled this necessary layer between the JavaScript and the and WebAssembly, which will allow using the program that the WebAssembly compiled. Will this browser communicate? This is a JavaScript layer that takes some calls from WebAssembly, which is brewed in their sandbox, and translate them through a browser-based WebSocket. Are there any other questions in this room? Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.